we're going to be studying the prophet Zechariah, or as you would say it in Hebrew, Zechariah. It's uh, really, really important. We've been talking about it, how important the prophets are, because we're in a dark time. And uh, it is said in by Peter, they're a light shining in a dark place. And then Jesus told us to watch the nations and watch the fig tree and see when they come into the prophetic place. Well, Zechariah, Zechariah is to the Old Testament what uh, Revelation is to the New. And it actually, at the end of Zechariah, it's going to be talking about a war, upcoming war, that is also spoken about in Revelation. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to stay with us as we go through the next uh, four weeks and uh, looking at this book. Now, there's a focus in Zechariah, Zechariah. One of the focuses is the Messiah. Yes, the coming Messiah. One of the focuses is Jerusalem. And uh, when I was getting ready to teach this recently at 3BI for a 3BI course, Billy Brim Bible Institute, and we got to go into Zechariah in great depth and detail, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, but no, we won't get to go that deep here. But I woke up one morning and I remembered a book I'd read years ago. And A Short History of Jerusalem by Abraham E. Milgram. And it had some statements in it about Jerusalem and what it means to the heart of the Jew. And this book is out of print now, but maybe you could find it online. You spell his name M-I-L-L-G-R-A-M, A Short History of Jerusalem. And I'm going to ask Shelley to read a little bit of it. These are the statements that God wanted me to get across to the class about the place of Jerusalem and the connection of the Jews with Jerusalem. Yes. Yes. For the Jews, Jerusalem is the one holy city in the world. To be sure, three other cities, and they name these three other cities, they say Hebron, Tiberias, and Safed. They assumed the status of holy cities, but... They were in no way comparable to Jerusalem, the city which God hath chosen to rest his name. And you'll find that in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 5. So, Jerusalem is also the city of the holy temple on Mount Moriah or Mount Moriah. Jerusalem is also the city on the holy temple. On Mount Moriah. And she's the city where the Messiah will, in time, reestablish God's kingdom on earth. Jerusalem encompassed the Jews' religious sentiments, his national identity, his mystic yearnings, his historic memories, his hopeful aspirations, and even more. Only a poet of stature can begin to delve into this mystery. The ordinary Jew, who has not been affected by the forces of assimilation, continually experiences this mystic attachment to the holy city. He does not try to explain it, just as a mother experiences her loving attachment to her children without attempting to analyze it, let alone describe it. But the powerful attachment of the Jew to Jerusalem is as baffling to the non-Jew as is the Jew's survival. It is an eternal riddle. And God put that in their heart, Shelley. The Bible tells us, you know, David, he was before the Babylonian captivity. That's right. But he wrote the psalm, By the rivers rivers of Babylon, Babylon. how could we sing? And while they were in... um, Captivity, if I if I forget you, O Jerusalem. That's right. May my right hand lose its cunning. My my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth and I can't even speak. Because Jerusalem yes. is that dear to the Jews and that dear to God. Yes. The apple of God's eye. Yes. And so we're going to find in this book of Zechariah much about Jerusalem. The book of Zechariah is divided into four parts. The first part is chapter 1, verses 1 to 6, and it's a call to repentance. Then, number 2, and we're going to go to this part. It's a series of eight visions, all shown to the prophet Zechariah in one night. Though having an historical foreground, they lead up to the last days. This book 
of Sicaria mm -hmm. leads up to the end of days and to the finale of God's dealings with Israel and the nations. Mm -hmm. And it's going on right now, yes, Shelley. Yes. Going on right now. Even as we speak. Then the third part is a, an address uh, to Darius. It has to do with some answering some questions. People ask the prophet. We won't go there. But the fourth division is a prophecy delivered for the very last of days. Um, a oh, prophecy delivered at a later period, which starting from the standpoint of the more immediate future, where they mm -hmm. were living at the time, brings us to the very climax of things when the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. And when as a result, Jehovah shall be king over all the earth and there shall be but one Lord and his name one. So about the first division, we're only going to say one thing. Just one thing. Uh, Shelley, there on uh, page three, read that uh, verse three. Uh, this verse is three. Zechariah chapter one and verse three. Therefore say thou unto them, thus saith Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies. Return unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. All right, now verses one through six is a call to repentance. All the Old Testament prophets had the message, repent. That, that's turn. Yes. You repent, you turn. You do yes. a U-turn. It's not something emotional. Right. Though you can have emotions when you do it, but it means you turn. You, yes. you turn to a U-turn and you were walk, going walking a different one direction. way and you go a different direction. So mm -hmm. the first six verses are return, you know, with your heart. Now, I brought this, I wanted to say this because it addresses him as Jehovah of hosts, Yehovah Tzabaoth, the Lord God of armies. This Lord God of armies is a title when God says, well, Baron, for instance, he said, he's the Lord of all things at whose call all created forces, they're his armies, must marshal themselves as if for war. And it is at the same time the covenant God, Jehovah, of the history of redemption, who joins his name to, he's the God of armies. And what it actually means is when he signs something like that in the Bible, it means, I'm telling you this, and if he signs it, Jehovah Sabaoth or Jehovah Sabaoth, Jehovah of hosts, if he signs it like that, it means if I have to call every army I've got <laughs> to get this done, it's going to be done. Who are his armies? The church is his army. Israel is his army. Angels' armies. Stars. He's used stars in the war against Sisera. Hail. Yes. He's used hail. He's going to use hail again. Right. Ezekiel 38, 39. So yes. if he has to call every army he's got to get this done, it's going to get done. So uh, I, I, I wanted to read that because in this book of Zechariah, uh, that title appears 53 times. Wow. In the 12 chapters, he calls himself that, meaning if it mm. takes all my armies, I'm getting this done. Mm. Um, it's 44 times in chapters 1 through 8 and 9 times in 9 through 14. So uh, he definitely uh, calls himself Yahweh Sabeo, Jehovah of hosts, and he starts out in the very first chapter. Now, we're going to that first chapter, but we're going to begin with verse uh, 7. And before we begin here, I'll have Shelley read it. But the prophet had eight. I want to tell you something. Before I read this book, I read through Zechariah because I, I read through the Bible. I mean, yeah. this is what we did in our Baptist. We had our daily Bible reading, so we went through the Bible. I think it took us three years uh, to get through all of it. But I, I no more understood the book of Zechariah than the man in the moon. I just checked it off. Yeah, your daily now, Bible, yeah, Bible, daily reading. Bible readings. Now, it, I did not know that it started with eight visions given to Zechariah in one night. My, my. He had these visions with maybe short breaks in between. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so there is a historical background here you need to understand. You need to know when he lived. He's one of the later prophets with Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. He's one of the later prophets. He is a prophet in the land when they have been in captivity. They've been in the cap uh, Babylonian captivity. They've come home. They're to rebuild the temple. They had a slow, sluggish start doing that till Haggai shamed them. And then Haggai prophesies only a short time, and then Zechariah prophesies a longer time. And Zechariah, who, whose name means uh, God remembers, mm -hmm. Jehovah remembers, 
Uh, he had these eight visions in one night, and all these visions have to do with Jerusalem. And they have to do with it in God's plan and the end times. They all have to do. And we're not going to have time to go into all eight of them. Oh, but we're going to go into the first one for okay. sure. All right, good. And um, they have to do with where it's placing God's heart and what he's plans the future for it. Because they're, they're a little discouraged, you know. Yes. I mean, the temple was destroyed. They went into Babylonian captivity. Mm-hmm. Now, there were probably in Babylonian captivity a million and a half, two million. Only 45,000, 42,500 came home with uh, Ezra and mm-hmm. Nehemiah. So they didn't mostly come home. They're mostly still back in Babylon. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Jerusalem's a rubble, mm-hmm. doesn't have a wall built. And they're, they're working on the temple, but they're not that far along. And they can see it's not going to be anything like the other temple mm-hmm. that they had. So it's a discouraging time. But uh, God gives him uh, these uh, series of visions, uh, probably in rapid succession with only short pauses between. Uh, so though distinct and in a sense, each one complete in itself, they form a connected picture of the future of Israel linked to the then existing time and closing with the prospect of the ultimate completion of the kingdom of God on the earth, the visible kingdom of God on the earth. So, of course, it's going to cover the times that we are. So, Shelley, read the first vision all the way through, and then we're going to go back and analyze it. Okay, so this is Zechariah chapter 1, beginning with verse 7. Upon the 4 and 20th day of the 11th month, which is the month Shabbat, In the second year of Darius came the word of Jehovah, the word of the Lord, unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, or Berechiah, the son of Edu, the prophet, saying, verse 8, I saw in the night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse, and he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom And behind him there were horses, red, sorrel, and white. Then I said, O my Lord, what are these? And the angel that spoke with me said unto me, I will show thee what these are. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth set it still and is at rest. Then the angel of the Lord spoke and said, O Yahweh Seboeth, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou have compassion? Will not, how long, long wilt thou, thou not have compassion on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah against which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years? And the Lord answered the angel that spoke with me with good words, even comforting words. So the angel that spoke with me said unto me, Proclaim thou, saying, Thus saith Yahweh Seboeth, the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy, and I'm very sore displeased with the nations that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped for evil. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I return to Jerusalem with compassions. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts. And a line shall be stretched forth over Jerusalem. Again proclaimed, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My city shall again overflow with prosperity. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, or Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Now, I do hope you have your Bibles there. And we're using uh, an English, uh, Hebrew to English translation, uh, JPS, but whatever Bible you have there will be perfectly Mm -hmm. fine. So um, in the dead of night and not in a dream, uh, but in a condition in which his mental and spiritual faculties are all together awake and attuned to God, uh, and he fully hears and comprehends and writes this. Now we say that he found, he saw a man riding upon a red horse. Who is this man? 
Now, Baron says this, the man, as we are told in verse 11, was Malak Yehovah, the angel of his face, the divine angel of the covenant, the second person of the blessed Trinity, whose early manifestations to the patriarch and prophets as the angel or messenger of Jehovah in the form of man were anticipations of his incarnation and of that incomprehensible humiliation to which he would afterwards condescend for our salvation. He would lay aside his glory and become a man. Yes. So he's called here the man. He's, he's a, he saw him riding up on a red horse. He stood among the myrtle trees, which were in the bottom. First off, myrtle trees here symbolizes Israel. And the word in Hebrew is hadassah, the myrtle. Uh -huh. If you know a woman named Myrtle, if she lived in Israel, her name would be Hadassah. And you remember, of course, that that was the name of Esther. Esther's name was Hadassah. Yes. So it's a humble little plant. And um, this, this uh, he is there. He's in the middle of, he's in the, I saw in the night a man, Jesus, riding upon a red horse. And he's among the Myrtle trees. He's among Israel that were in the bottom now, this word bottom here is the word metsula, and it has to do with the word tzolal, which means sinking in the water. It's the very term that is used of Pharaoh and his armies. They sank as lead in the mighty waters in Exodus. They sank. Yes. So mm -hmm. here is Israel, and it is sunk. The myrtle trees are sunk. They're at the bottom of the great sea of the Gentile world. They yes. are low. They yes. are at the bottom. Yes. In the very midst of the great deep of humanity, threatened to be swallowed up in the mire, but standing among them is this second person of the blessed Trinity, Trinity who loves them and redeemed them. Now, modern translations sometimes, I was looking at different <laughs> translations why did you Some of the modern translations, which I like generally, use the word glen or shade. Israel wasn't standing in any glen. Israel wasn't standing in any shade. Israel was sinking in the mire. And but among them is this man, man on a red horse who is their redeemer and who is going to come one day and be incarnate. Hallelujah yes. for us all. Yes. Now, he stood among the myrtle trees and um, he said, the, the, the angel that spoke, there's an interpreting angel. Actually, the Hebrew says, in me. So Zechariah was hearing this inside him. Here's Jesus. He's the man. And then there's an interpreting angel that's speaking to Zechariah. And uh, so I said, verse 9, O Lord, what are these things? And the angel that spoke with me are actually in me, in his spirit. Yes. Uh, I'll show you what these are. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, Jesus said, these are they whom the Lord Jehovah has sent to walk to and fro in the whole earth. Yes. So Jehovah has sent these spirit beings upon spirit horses mm -hmm. to go among the whole earth and to... Uh, like a reconnaissance? Reconnaissance. They're going to do reconnaissance. And so that's what he said. They have come to do that. That the Father God has sent them to do a reconnaissance in the whole earth. And uh, verse 11, and they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, here's, they're giving their reconnaissance. They're giving their report. Mm -hmm. We have walked to and fro through the earth and behold, all the earth sits still and is at rest. Now, I know one time, Shelly, I'm going to have to tell this quickly because yeah. our time tell it, tell just it, runs though. out. You got to so tell fast. it. You have to tell but it. But Brother Hagen, he was in a meeting and this was a prayer meeting, I think in 1980. And uh, Sister Wilkerson, she told me personally what she saw. But during the meeting, it went on three weeks, this prayer meeting. And Sister Jeannie Wilkerson, she yeah. saw a man ride through the wall on a white horse. She told me it was Jesus. And he went up and down the aisles of that great meeting out at Ramah. Yep. And, and he's, on his steed. And, and she said, sir, what are you doing? And he said, I'm inspecting the troops. Yes. I want to see if their swords are sharpened. Yes. And they came out their mouths. Yes. Then he rode up to Brother Hagin with a scroll and put that scroll in Brother Hagin, giving him his orders. Mm -hmm. So um, Brother Hagin said, you, if, you could, if your eyes were not beholden, the very air about you 
is infested with demons, but there's at least twice as many angels. So these angels are sent by God. They are sent by God and they're doing this reconnaissance in the earth. And Jesus is on the white horse and these others are with them. So they give the report to God, yes. the Father. Then the angel of the Lord, verse 12 said, O Lord of hosts, Jehovah of hosts, how long will you not have compassion on Jerusalem and the cities of Judah? They've been in captivity 70 right. years. And the Lord answered the angel with good words and comforting words. All these eight visions are going to be good words and comforting words about the future of Jerusalem, which at that very time looks very dark. Yes, opposite. And the yeah. angel spoke with me and said, Proclaim thou saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I'm jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. He, he God loves Jerusalem. God yes. loves Zion. And... After they give their reconnaissance to God, the Father, he says, I'm very sore displeased with the nations uh -oh. that are at ease. Mm. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the evil. Therefore, thus saith Jehovah of hosts, I am returned to Jerusalem with compassion. He said, I was just a little displeased, and I sent them into a captivity. But the nations treated them terribly. It's like this. They went into captivity uh, because of their sins and their backslidings. He scattered them, but he's going to regather them. But it's like you would be, uh, let's, let's say I, I, I was in my yard in Collinsville, 624 South 13th, and I paddled your brother right on the behind and uh, because he probably needed it. I'm talking about Chip particularly. And uh, it would be like the neighbor then across the street said, hey, I'll help you and came over with a crowbar and started beating him. So that's what God says. I don't like this the way you, the way you did this. His will for the Jews in captivity was not anything bad. It was something very, very good. It was blessings. Yes. They were supposed to go into captivity and Play they were supposed to be uh, making children. gardens and having children and uh, uh, bless the Lord. But in captivity, we've seen it all. We've seen the Spanish Inquisition. We've seen the Crusades. We've yes. seen the Tsarist Russia. We've seen communist Russia. We've seen the Holocaust. Nazis. Anti Semitism. Yeah. And it's satanic. And it's against the Jews. And God said, I'm very sore displeased with the nations. Yeah. And He said, My, I am very sore displeased with the nations that are at ease. They were at ease. Uh, it, it, they shouldn't have been at such ease and because comfort. Because Israel, with, the myrtle tree, was sinking. The, it, the, the, it was sinking, the one that God had given them to reveal God to them. Yes. I'm very sore displeased with the nations. And I want you to know, folks, he's very sore displeased with what's going on, what has gone on, and what's going on still. And there are judgments of the nations happening in the church. I think we will send to you... Uh, with our offer, we'll send my little book on the judgment of the nations. Therefore, I'm very sort of pleased with the nations, and he's going to judge them. That's happening now. Therefore, thus saith Jehovah, I return to Jerusalem with compassion. My house shall be built in it, saith Jehovah, and a line shall be stretched over Jerusalem, a plumb line. We're going to build it. It's going to be in the earth, something you can touch. Again, proclaim, saying, thus saith Jehovah of hosts, my cities, the cities in Israel, shall overflow with prosperity and Jehovah shall yet choose and comfort shall yet comfort Zion and yet choose Jerusalem know folks that he has chosen Jerusalem and I, and the nations right now you I was so big 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 when president trump of the united states of america said i side with god yes i'm siding with god I choose Jerusalem because God chose Jerusalem and that's where we're putting our embassy. Shelly was talking to me when we were off camera about that verse that says, and Jehovah answered the angel that spoke with me with good words and comforting words. And she said something. So Shelly? Well, I was just bring, thinking, where have we heard comfort? Comfort one another with these words. The same Holy Spirit that worked through this man, Zechariah, is the same Holy Spirit that worked through Paul when he wrote a letter to the church. The Thessalonians, when he talked about the rapture. Mm -hmm. It's comforting. Those are yes. comforting words. And this is comforting words. I'm going to restore Jerusalem. And it has to do with the future. It has yeah. to do with the future. So we're offering you this book on Zechariah. Oh, where did the time go, Shelley? I don't know. I, I don't couldn't know. get into it like I want to. We're having to let those seven other visions go, but we're going to pick it up in the more prophetic of our times uh, when we come back next week. But this book, Zechariah, is, is a treasure. If you like to study, if you don't like to study, don't order this. 
but we're going to put in with this $25 and it sells for $27. We're offering it $25, including shipping. And we're going to put in our little book, The Judgment of the Nations, because that's what's going on right now. And nations are going to be judged for how they treat Israel. God is restoring Jerusalem. Yes. He did choose Jerusalem. We're going to see when we come to the 14th chapter of, uh, of this uh, wonderful book of Zechariah that Jerusalem will be the capital of the whole earth and Jehovah will be king. Jehovah Jesus yes. will be king over the whole earth. Yes. So that's where we're going. Be sure when you come back with us, have your Bible so that you can follow verse by verse.